Fortunately, you know, Burbio, which has tracked school openings and closings throughout this pandemic, was so optimistic they didn't think they were going to need to publish their data this fall or anybody would be interested. Well, in fact, they're now pretty busy over there at that small company tracking a small but fast growing and widespread number of school closings. The road back barometer back to school edition shows that 1,400 schools around the country have closed. That's small compared to the 100,000 schools out there. But it grew by 140 percent in just the past week. And the average day of closure is 8.7 days. Of course, while the number is small, it's accelerating and widespread. School closings span 35 states with concentrations in Texas, Georgia, South Carolina and elsewhere in the south, but also up through the north. You can see from the purple dots, they mark September closings. Many are recent. That is, schools just closed shortly after they reopened. Some have since opened again. Now, schools have reacted to Delta among disrupted schools. You can see how they did it. 52% went virtual, 40% closed entirely, at least for some time. 5% delayed their start. It's unclear how many parents are affected by the closings. <clears throat> we know more women have dropped out of the labor force than men since February 2020. That's unusual in a recession. There are many more men in the workforce, and they usually get hit harder. This time, the pandemic hit the service industry hardest. That's where women predominate in jobs. We know from surveys that child care and school, school, schooling issues play a role, at least part of the reason why women have yet to return to the labor force. For an idea how fast this has come on, the Fed's Beige Book yesterday mentioned COVID and Delta 54 times. In July, just nine. And it said that employers had not seen the rush of applicants they expected with school reopenings. This data about school closings may help explain why.